Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create an AWS organization. So we're going to jump on into the AWS Management Console, create an AWS organization, set up some OUs, invite and set up some AWS accounts, and also create a service control policy. Let's take a look at the architecture that we're going to build. So based on the previous section of this course, you already have in place the management account, which you've created, and also you created a second account. You created a development account. Within the management account, we're going to go ahead and build our AWS organization service. With this in place, we're then going to set up two organization units, the development organization unit and the production organization unit. We already have the development account we created in the last section of this course. So all we need to do here is send out an invitation to that development account and bring it into the organization as a member of the organization. We're then going to actually create a brand new account called the production account, which is going to be used for hosting our applications in the production environment. In addition to that, we're also going to set up a service control policies. When you set up AWS organizations and invite or create new member accounts into that organization, each and every member account still continues to have a root user. That root user still has the capability of disconnecting from the organization, of leaving the organization. What we want to do is we want to prevent that from happening. And that makes sense, right? When you set up an organization and invite member accounts that may belong to different departments, you want to ensure that those members do not inadvertently, whether by accident or for malicious reasons, leave the organization. And so I'll show you how to set up a service control policy to prevent that from happening. Right, let's jump on into the AWS Management Console and set all of this up. Okay, so here we are in my AWS Management Account. Now, this is the first account we created in the last section of the video associated with my master at the vegan.studio.co.uk email address. Okay, so this is going to be the management account as I'd highlighted right in the previous section of this course. Now, in addition to this, I also have another account that I created and I got you guys to create as well, which is going to be dubbed the development account. To set up AWS organization, you need to have one account that's going to be designated as the management account, otherwise previously known as the master account. And I'm going to be using this account for that purpose. So I've named the account management so that I can easily recognize it. And within this account, I'm going to go ahead and go to the AWS organization service. And there it is there. So I'm going to open the AWS organization service. And when you first open it up, you're going to see this um, splash screen that will show up there. There it is. So all you need to do is click create an organization and it is just that simple. Literally just click that button and it creates the AWS organization service for you. Now, when it has created the AWS organization service for you, there's a root structure to the organization. So it's got the root of the organization and then the management account. The management account is obviously sitting at the root of the organization. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually invite our development account, okay? And the development account was created in the last section of this course and I hope you guys have already created your development account as well. I've actually opened it up in an incognito window, so let me just bring that up quickly. Okay, and there it is there. So that's my vegan development account. That account has been created outside of the organization previously, and I'm gonna invite this account into the organization. So in order to invite this account, I need to send the invitation from the organization service and the management account. But before I do that, I need to make a note of the account ID that I'm trying to invite. So I need to just click on this drop down box and copy the account ID to my clipboard. And I'll go back to the management account. And here I am back to the management account. And I'm going to click add an AWS account. Okay. And you will notice that there are the two options to add member accounts to your organization. There's creating an AWS account from within the organization service, which we will do shortly. But there is the ability to invite an existing AWS account, which is what we are going to do now. So to do this, you need to provide the account ID for the account that you're inviting. So I'm just going to paste that in there. That's my account ID. I can send a message to the root user of the account ID. Please accept this invitation. Okay, keep it simple and send the invitation. Now the invitation has gone to the development account. Let's jump into the development account and see where that invitation shows up. Okay, so I'm back in my development account. Now in the development account, if you go to AWS organization, 
you will see that there is indeed an invitation waiting for me and I'll show you where that is in a second. You'll need to click on invitations on the left hand side and you can see that there is an invitation from master at thevacantstudio.co.uk um, and there's a message there that says please accept this invitation. As the root user of this account, if I'm happy with this invitation and I want to become a member of the organization, I can go ahead and click accept invitation. At this point, the development account is now a member of the AWS organization that the management account created. And we'll flip back once again to the other account. Okay, so I'm back in my management account. I'm just going to refresh this page. Okay, and you will see, in fact, the vegan development account with that account ID has now become a member of this organization. Right, next, I'm going to show you how to create an AWS account from within the organization service. So we follow the same process, click add an AWS account. And this time, obviously, we got to go with the default setting, which says create an AWS account. We need to provide it with an account name. So I'm going to call this one production app. OK, this is going to be my production app account. I have another email address specifically for this account, which I had explained more about in section one of this course. So you do need a separate email address for every account that you create on AWS. So I'm going to just put in the email address for the production app account here, production app at the vacant studio.co.uk. And AWS is going to create an IAM role called the organization account access role. And this role allows the management account to access resources in the member account. When you create an AWS organization service, the whole idea is that you're going to put all of your identities in one specific account, and those identities will need to perform cross account access to your various member accounts. You would need to have a relevant role in place in order to facilitate that cross account access. When it comes to the management account requiring access to those member accounts, AWS creates such a role for you, and you're welcome to use this role to perform your cross account access functions from the management account to the member accounts. Now, interestingly, we didn't see any reference to this role being created when we invited an existing AWS account. And the reason for that is simple. Such a role wasn't created. So this is something we still need to do for any accounts that you invite to the organization. And I'll come on to how we set that up shortly. For now, as you're creating a new AWS account, AWS creates the role automatically for you, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and click create an AWS account. And what this is doing in the background is it's spinning up a brand new AWS account for you without you having to provide all the necessary information for billing, contact, verification of your mobile phone, et cetera, et cetera, as you would do when you're creating accounts outside of an organization. And this takes a few seconds to set up. One thing to be aware of is that the email address that I used to create this new account has now become the root user of that account. And obviously we didn't supply any password information while setting up this account. So if you ever needed to log into that account as the root user, which you should very seldomly do, Remember that you're going to have to request for a password reset, which is going to send you a password reset link to the email address associated with that account. OK, I'm just going to quickly refresh the page over here and you can see, in fact, that it has already created the production app account. And so we now have the management account, the vacant development account where we're going to be doing most of our labs in in this course and a production app account created to illustrate how you can create accounts from within the organization service. Next. Let's talk about organization units. So organization units enable you to create containers within which you can club member accounts that share common workloads. For example, the production OU will host production member accounts and the development OU will host development member accounts. And creating organization units allows you to then apply service control policies to the organization unit itself, which will then filter down to any member accounts contained within. It's really easy to do. You click on the root, you go to actions, click create new under organization unit, and you need to give it a name. So we'll call this one the development hyphen OU and click create organization unit. And the organization unit has been created. I'll create another one for production environments. So this one will be called production hyphen OU. 
click create organization unit. And those are my two organization units that I've created. Now all we have to do is move the accounts into their relevant OUs. So the production app AWS account, you just click on that, click actions, click move. Let's move that into the production OU. And we do the same with the vacant development account. We need to move it into the development OU. So actions under AWS account, click move and click the development OU and move AWS account. And at this point in time, our org structure has been configured correctly. So we've got the root, we've got the development OU, which contains the vacant development account, and we've got the production OU, which contains the production app account. Next, let's talk about service control policies. Now, service control policies are not enabled by default. You need to enable them first before you can use them. On the left-hand side, if you click on policies, you'll see a list of available policy types for your AWS organization service. Now, we're gonna be focusing on service control policies, but just before we do, I wanna draw your attention to backup policies. Backup policies enable you to deploy organization-wide backup plans to ensure compliance across organization accounts. Using backup policies will help ensure consistency on how you implement backup plans for your various member accounts in the organization. Now, I would recommend that you actually click on the learn more button and just have a quick read about backup policies as well when you can. For the purposes of this lab, let's focus on service control policies. So I'm gonna click on service control policies and enable service control policies. This essentially creates the default service control policy, which is the full access service control policy and has configured your AWS organization service control policy with a deny list, okay? So that's where everything is allowed except for any policies that you may create to deny certain services or API actions in your organizations and one that affects any specific member accounts depending on how you apply that service control policy. And this is the default configuration, okay? The deny list is the default setup. You could have gone with the allow list where you basically get rid of the full AWS access policy and basically deny everything and then start adding policies to allow specific services and specific API calls. Okay, so that's service control policy enabled. The next thing that I wanna do is actually create a service control policy. As we mentioned right at the beginning of this lecture, we're gonna be creating a policy to prevent member accounts from leaving the organization. Remember, we've got two member accounts in this organization. We've got a vacant development account and a production app account. Okay, so for the purposes of creating this policy, let me just show you a sample policy that we will be using. Okay, so this is a sample policy that's available to you in the resources section of this video and in our GitHub repository. It's a very simple policy. All it's saying is that we're gonna deny the ability to leave the organization as an action, and that's applied to all accounts in this um, policy. And so wherever this policy is applied to, whichever OU you are applying it to, all the accounts within that OU are gonna be affected. Okay, so let's just copy that policy and go back to the AWS management account. Here we are. And so I'll click create a policy. Okay, we need to create a policy name. So I'm gonna just call it deny leaving org, okay, for leaving organization. And this is where you put in your policy statement. So it's gonna be there. And that's the policy statement there that we've just pasted. And then click create policy. Right, so the policy has now been created. Uh, and this is a customer managed policy. So you need to manage this policy yourself. Now what we need to do is apply this policy to those specific OUs. So we're gonna attach the policy to the development OU and the production OU and click attach policy. At this point in time, the policy has been applied and we can test this out very quickly. Let's jump on into the development account and see how this works. Okay, so here we are back at my vacant development account. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to AWS organizations and we're gonna test that service control policy out. And here we are in the dashboard of the vegan development organizations. And you can see that we are a member of this organization, okay? And so all we need to do now is test out that policy. So I'm gonna say, leave this organization leave the organization and you can see I've already been prompted with an error 
you do not have permissions to access this resource. Remember, I am logged in into this account as the root user of the account, the full administrator of this account, and I still cannot leave the organization. And that's because of that service control policy that's being applied to the development OU, which is filtered down to the development account. So we'll just cancel out of that. And that brings us to the end of this video. So we've created an AWS organization, we've created OUs, we've invited a member account, we've created a member account, and we have used SCPs to prevent certain actions from taking place. Specifically, we've prevented our member accounts from leaving the organization. In the next video, I'm gonna actually show you how we deal with cross account access from our management account into these member accounts. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you.